Hi nieces and nephews. Welcome back. Welcome back to Auntie Nell's Kitchen. And I'm so glad. I know I've disappeared for a few days, but hey, you know, we just keep on going, right? But most importantly, I'm back. And today I'm back and I'm going to be making some one of my grandmother's famous recipes, a sweet potato cobbler. And I know some of you never heard of that, right? You just heard of the fruits, blackberry, blueberry, peach, etc., etc., etc. But we're going to be making sweet potato cobbler. Yes, good old sweet potato cobbler. It's one of my grandmother's famous recipes. My sister loves it. I love it. They used to sell it at my old job a long time ago, but when someone else took over the cafeteria, they stopped selling that and they stopped making it. And, you know, we we were really upset that they stopped baking that sweet potato cobbler. So it's really hard to find in a lot of southern restaurants these days. They mainly just stick to peach here in the south. Um, a lot of people have gotten away from sweet potato cobbler. That's an old southern time favorite. So I'm going to be making that. And I'm just going to bring back grandmama, okay? So give me a moment and we'll get started, okay? Let me do a flip and a sweat. And for those of you that are running through my kitchen at this time, I hope you grab a chair, hit the like and subscribe button so you can become a part of my big happy family too. You can be a niece and nephew. So hold on one second. Okay, as you see, my board is a mess because I already made uh, a crust. And I'm going to show you what it took to make that crust. Okay, so um, what I've done, this is two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. When making your pie crust, please make sure your measurements are precise. Scrape off when you measure with your cup. Um, make sure you level off your cups of flour. Okay, this is two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. You're going to take two um, sticks of butter. And what you're going to do to this butter... You're not gonna um, just throw in, it's not like I'm making biscuits. I'm gonna cut this butter up into little small pieces. You know, this is what I'm gonna do to this. I'm gonna cut it up into small pieces. Slices, you can go slices, pieces, whatever you, you know, whatever you wanna call it, you know. You can cut it up any way you want to. And you don't throw them in all together. You got to break them up. You got to be separated. You know, you don't want to, um, they need to be, you know, separate them. Separate your pieces. Make sure you get all the goodness, that butter in now. Some people use shortening. You know, you can use shortening in your pie crust. Um, butter makes it better. You know, you from the South, honey. Butter, 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 butter. Got to throw that butter in now. Take your, your second stick and you do the same thing. Got to get that butter. I already got that, got everything preheating. You know, and. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with this. Now, back in the day, they didn't, uh, they used to use the butter. Your butter needs to be cold, y'all. Not warm butter. They used to use a fork and blend it all, but I'm not doing that. Toss it around, and you're going to add a, a teaspoon of salt. Teaspoon of salt. And you're going to add a teaspoon of sugar. You can omit that if you want to that's up to you okay you're going to coat your butter with your flour and what i'm going to do that's all coated i'm going to take my food processor and what i'm going to do i am going to crumb this down i'm going to put in my food processor and crumb it down and you'll see what i'm talking about Cause I already made one pie crust, but I need you guys to see what I'm doing. And I pulse it. I pulse it till I get crumbs. And you will see what I'm doing. Tap, 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 tap. Now you, I yes, I have a bigger processor, but I don't feel like going out there to, uh, 
that box out there and fool with it. You can puff, but I and you know you want you want crumbs. This is what you want. You want it crummy. You want crumbs. And I'm gonna dump this into this bowl so you can see what Auntie talking about. Okay? This is what you're looking for. You want crumbs. And I'm gonna I'm gonna let me do the second part of this, and then we'll be I'll be right back and we're gonna continue with our pie crust. All right, I have my crumbs here. This is, it's all nice and crummy. Now I'm going to add seven tablespoons of ice cold water. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven. Make sure you don't get any ice in it. And I'm gonna just gonna combine this. Now you and this, I want it to conform into to it all the well combined into a ball. Now if you see where it's too sticky, that means you have too much water. But some people, if you don't, for you beginners, add your uh, ice. Start off with five, and then you work from there. And I just keep working it. And if you uh, see where it's dry, you just uh, add you a little more water. Then I add another one. Make sure I don't get any ice in here. And I'm going in with my hands. Some people they make their dough just they just do the whole process in a food processor. My grandmother didn't have a food processor. She didn't use a food processor. Her hands were her food processor, and that's the way I do it. I only use it to break down the butter. That's the only that's the only time I use use that food processor. And this is a that's a small one. I have my dough. I'm gonna flour my board a little bit more because I had already made one set of dough. Trying not to knock anything over. Flour my hand. Now you I don't you you don't use your dough right away. Now this dough is enough for two a two layer pie or what I'm gonna show you what I'm baking the cobbler in. It'll do that. Now you can um, cut this in half because I'll show you what I've done. I had already made a dough so I had already made a dough so what I did this is I cut it in half for my bottom and my top so this is already ready 
to be rolled out. So this I'm gonna because I want to make a uh, something else later on. So you know your dough can be frozen. So what I'm going to do is put this into saran wrap and roll that baby out. Just gonna throw this in here. I'll do it neater later. I just wanna just get it in the fridge and I'll wrap it later but to put it in the freezer. You wrap, you wrap them five times. I'm gonna wrap this five times. Cover it in saran wrap layers of five. Now, while this is what I will be making the cobbler in, this is a Dutch oven. I already got this bottom cross. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, remember I talked about brown blind baking. So I'm going to move this out the way and I have, girl, boy, I tell you guys, if you saw Auntie's kitchen, whew, I'm going to put this in the oven. But before I do that, I want to brown, to blind bake my crust. And what that, remember when I talked about what that means? Because I don't want my crust pumping up in the middle. So I'm going to blind bake it by throwing beans in it. And it's already, so I'm going to put this in the oven. And we're going to start making our filling, okay? Be right back, family. One more thing, family. I greased that cast iron uh, Dutch oven with some Crisco um, vegetable shortening. Now, this, this is what I use. I don't use lard. So that's what I did with that. So that's uh, going in the oven again. So we're going to, I'm going to let this, uh, sit here while I get the we're going to work on our filling okay okay now the potatoes that I use this is uh four potatoes they were the size of a iPhone um case they were about long as your hand and about as wide as your hand this is uh th this is four sweet potatoes I don't buy the little ones I don't buy the little sweet potatoes but this is what you want them cooked to you don't want them cooked mushy you want them uh, fork tender. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. You want them fork tender. You don't want them mushy. This is what you want them as. You want them fork tender. And this is for me. Yum, yum, yum. gonna just now this is the water that they were cooked in I'm not gonna bother that because that has that good sweet potato flavor into it and you're gonna add I'm gonna get my measuring spoons again Three tablespoons of vanilla extract. Gonna add a gonna add, ta add a tablespoon and a half of cinnamon. One whole tablespoon of nutmeg, and you're gonna let that just come to a boil. But you're gonna give it a little stir. And I gotta go get some uh, butter. Gotta add that butter. 
Add that butter. Get that a good stir. Got to add your sugar, too. going to add a cup and a half to start of sugar. And you see all that juice? And I'm going to taste my uh, juice to make sure it has the right amount of sweetness that satisfies. A little bit more sugar, about another half a cup. So make that two cups of sugar. And you just bring that to a boil. Okay, this is three teaspoons of butter. Turn my heat down, because I just want my butter to melt now. Turn the heat down, because I don't want my potatoes to cook. Okay, I don't want them to cook. So I'll be right back once this butter melt down. Okay, family, I have the sweet potatoes. They're all nice and boiled. I have taken four teaspoons of cornstarch. Four teaspoons of cornstarch to two teaspoons of cold water. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring this up and I'm going to be adding that to my sweet potatoes. The uh, filling is nice and it's to the consistency that I want it. And my crust is done. I've already removed the beans from it so my crust is half baked my bottom crust because you don't want a soggy crust so I'm going to pour some of this well this is a very large pot of uh, goodness not a large pot and I'm going to let this come because you want you know what people want in the cobbler is the crust and the juice that's what that's what they're looking for the crust and the juice that's what makes the cobbler the crust and the juice and i'm gonna let this simmer and come to a boil a little bit and thicken up and we'll be right back and we're gonna get to filling this uh dutch oven and we're gonna finish this cobbler off i'm gonna fill my potatoes because you know i like to get all them that goodness in there first mm, look at there see what i'm talking about look at that oh goodness just make you want to dive in now. But it's not ready, nieces and nephews. It's not ready. And I'm going to show you something that I like to do that makes it a little bit more special. Mm. 
show you something that auntie likes to do make it a little bit more special so you want your cobbler full of goodness it ain't a sweet potato cobbler don't have any potatoes and juice you gotta have that goodness in there that's why i spoon out all of my potatoes first then i add my uh juice because you want to make sure you get all the goodness in here i don't want to leave any potatoes left behind so now I take me a ladle, 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 whatever y'all want to call it. And I take me my ladle, ladle. I'm bigger. Bring this closer. Then I add all this goodness in here. And don't worry about it. And you're gonna have to move those around because so you don't want you you need that juice to get down in there. But that's what people are looking for. You don't want a dry cobbler. See some of that look. Like. You go to a, a restaurant and then we're going to swip back over because we're going to make our top crust. Hold on, family. Okay. And you know what? I got to go with this um, sweet potato cobbler that I'm getting ready to make. But this is today's dinner. Got some, uh, going to make some chicken and dumplings. Because that has been a request. And me and Katie Pot love chicken and dumplings. So I'm gonna roll this baby out so I can make my top crust. Roll, roll this one out. This is that other half of the dough I had previously made. You know what I think I'm going to do? I, you know what? I'm going to save this one. I'm going to get my other one. I think what I'm going to do is Same recipe so they can stick to, they can hang out together. Give it a give my top crust make it thick. Give it a nice thick top crust because you need because uh you want I want a thick top crust. Yeah, give it a good thick top crust. I don't want to stick them to my board. enough for me if it's not thick enough for me do I want it that thickness because I do want that thick crust I don't want it thin I don't want my top crust thin that's what I just thought about. I said, you know, I want a thick th top crust. See how that's. 
Yep, cool. And your pie crust, if you can pick it up and it's not falling all over the place, you got a good pie crust. Make sure this baby don't stick to my board because I flipped it over. And I'm going to bring... Let me get it labeled, labeled over there to the pot. Let me get you guys over there. Now, now this is good. Nice thick. I want it thick because look at it. If it falls down, that is fine because you want some, uh, people want that. This is what people want. They want that crust. They want, the, they want that crust. And I'm going to take me a little egg wash so it can be nice and golden brown. Make me a little egg wash and I'll be right back, family. Got my egg wash. The egg wash is basically just a beaten egg and with some water. It's beaten with a little water. Now, when you're dealing with an egg wash, you don't you're not trying to you're not trying to be Picasso. You basically you you're trying to give it that nice, pretty golden brown. You're not um you just want to be gentle. You just want to be a, you want to be gentle. You're not trying to like I said. You're not making an oil painting. Some people can use butter. I don't use butter because butter doesn't give it that goldenness that I want. So I use the egg wash. And then I would add my little special touch to it. Just use a pastry brush. If you have a small one, you can that's that's better, that's best to use. A small one but if you have a huge pan use a larger one this is perfect as you can see I'm not going crazy with the egg wash if I see any a puddle here all I do is go in it and zip it on through around make sure all of my crust is covered There's a little spot that I missed. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take some cinnamon sugar. I buy this already pre-done. Now I just take a little bit, sprinkle it on. I don't sprinkle it from there because you'll have too much. You don't want to do that. Just sprinkle a little bit. It's all you're going is for a little bit. And that juice that you have left, you save that, okay? You save that. Sprinkle just a little bit on your edges so you can have all that goodness. And this is going to go into the oven. I got it going in at 4.25 for 20 minutes. And I'm going to take that dough, that rest that pie dough, because I'm going to probably make, make something with it. So, be back, back. La, 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 la. Rumble, stumbles, crumbles. La, la. I will be right back, and we will be rejoining our family reunion. Let this get baked. Again, 4.25 for about 20, 25 minutes. Not even 25 minutes, probably about, yeah, probably about 20, 25 minutes. And we'll be back. Guess remember I just said what I'm going to do with this pie crust. So you guys just stay tuned. You'll know. Um, I'm going to make a summer tart because I have been meaning to make a summer tart. And um, hadn't gotten around to it. 
So I said, well, you know, I just I have this extra pie crust. I'm going to make a tart. So one thing I would have to do is um, get fruit. So I already have my, the hard part is cut out for me. So be right back. Oh, y'all, look at that. You, you hear that? Mm, you hear that sizzling going on? That's some of that juice, that goodness down in there. Now I need to get me a good spoon and dig into that so I can get some of that goodness out of there. Let me get a spoon and we're going to dig into that. Oh. I need a bowl. Can't dig into nothing without a bowl. You know I'm going to aggravate my sister by sending her a picture. So we're going to cut into, how about right, this good enough? Look at that. Mm. I'm going to get this crust here. Now y'all know auntie ain't got no business with this. Oh, look at that. See what I see? I, that's why I said I wanted that thick crust on top of that. Get some of this bottom crust. Look at that. Mm. See that cast iron? This cast iron pot still got it cooking. Throw some of this on here. Look at that. Look at there. Don't this look good? Sweet potato cobbler. Now this is some good eating. And see, got that juice going on. Got those potatoes up under there, that nice thick crust topped with that cinnamon sugar. And I'm gonna, my juice seem to be wanting to run away from me. And I'm gonna smooth some of this out. So I can get some, get that juice down in that bowl a little bit and throw some of this goodness crust on top of here. I ain't got no business with that. Lord, no. That, mm -mm. I have no business with this. And you know, Auntie got to fly right. Because Auntie don't fly right. Mm -mm. I don't play by, I don't play by my diabetes. Look at that. Look at that. Mm -mm -mm. Those in that little delicious family. So you know, Auntie got to, because... Until you gotta get started on these chicken and dumplings you all will see in, in another in the next upload. So we this is gonna be our, our Sunday dinner. Hold on one second, family. Thank you guys for joining. While I uh we made this delicious sweet sub old fashioned. This is my grandmother's recipe, my pearl, that sweet potato cobbler. Now I know it looks delicious, because it definitely looks delicious for me. Auntie can only have a little bit of this. So this is going to stay home. Well, Auntie. And um, well, that's my little bowl. And that, that's going to last me a little while. So thank you guys. Love you guys. Thank you all your love and support. I hope you make this good old Southern favorite uh, for you and your family and friends. And share with them. Or, you know, like I always say, keep it to yourself. Again, thank you for all your love and support, your um, likes. I appreciate it. It really helps my channel. It's YouTube, Google, whoever. You know, all of them let Auntie is still doing a good job. Okay, tight hugs. Kisses to all of you to the next upload. Because I got to get started on these chicken and dumplings because the village is hungry. Okay? I'll talk to you guys later. Till the next upload. Love you guys. Bye.